Who is going to be taking on Jack Robinson in the final of the Corona Open J-Bay? We're going to find out. It's going to be a battle between the goofy footer, the Brazilian Iago Dora, and the Australian Ethan Ewing. Both these guys have had incredible highlight moments on their road through to this semi-final clash. But it's been Iago Dora putting up the biggest scores. Ethan yet to break into the excellent range, but he has been putting together some solid heat score totals. Ronnie Blakey sitting alongside a couple of world champions. Big wave. World champ Pete Mel and the 11-time world champion Kelly Slater. And we're going to see Ethan Ewing get things started first here. Having some kind of year, but still chasing that elusive first championship to a win. You'd have to like his chances here at Jeffreys Bay. He's got a nice clean wall standing up here. Big hook off the top. Nice power and acceleration out of that turn as he goes now to the layback jam. On his way to a very solid start here in the semis. And the conditions only improving here on finals day as Ethan takes this one way down the line. And it looks like it's going to line up for a bit more on this final section too as he drives up into the lip and hangs on to the finish. Kelly Slater, that was impressive. That's such good surfing. I don't know how you surf that way better. I mean, give him a nine. <laughs> that was just so perfectly surfed. In the replay of that wave, we'll see. There, there wasn't a glitch anywhere. It was a mid-size wave. A uh, great wave to get this, get it started, and it just had such a nice pace to it. And, and actually, with this little bit of wind coming up, it was still glassy. And um, I don't know. I mean, Ethan's as good a surfer as exists in the world right now. It's really fun to watch him. Can we touch on uh, you know, the style that is carried here as we watch Yago up now? This is going to be a fun heat to watch because those big backhand snaps have been scoring so well and maybe in, in some respects more favoured than the front side cars. But Ethan digs that rail in. He comes out with great speed. So Yago is going to have to continue to attack these bowls with that big vertical approach. There's another solid hit. Lose no speed and gets back into the pocket once again. And what a return to competition it's been. He had a nasty break uh, similar to yours, Kelly. So you'll be able to really talk to that. And, just how difficult the recovery is when you have that Liz Frank injury. And uh, Yago's just looks so on on his run through to this point. Yeah. These guys are both two of my favorite surfers in the world. These guys are awesome. Got them both on my fantasy team. Oh, as cool. You're still playing fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, well, I, we got a big group of friends that all play it and we all bet money. So, do you uh, put uh, yourself on your team? Hey, of course, you got to back yourself. Yeah, you can't bet. You know, you can't do. Uh, that, that was Pete Rose's thing. You know, he always bet on himself. <laughs> They're good. So um, <laughs> let's have a little replay of this wave because uh, you absolutely loved it, Kelly, and I could see you just shrugging, just going, "What more can you do with it?" Yeah, I mean, so far, perfectly surfed. Watch this variety and power right there. Carves it all the way back at the whitewater. There, just lays the hammer down um, again. Boom, look how clean the rail is and how good the fins are sticking there. A little bit different variety, almost a little tail throw, but it keeps the momentum down the line, almost like a layback snap would, where your shoulders are still aimed down the line. It cleans up again and boom, almost lets the tail loose there. Almost comes in stuck, but I, I don't know. I'm really interested to see where they go with this because that was such good surfing. But his thing here is that he, you know, we talked about why is he so special, and it's his extension through these carbs. I mean, and all that water and off the rail, it's he extends some, just a little bit more, and uh, it showcases that searing part of it. He's accelerating through the maneuver, and he accelerates for a longer period of time. And this one here, I mean, mm. that's just a beautiful. We've seen this layback snap a lot. How but good did that so feel? Good. How good did that one feel? <laughs> so alive. The extension is there, Peeper, to the, the compression out of each of those maneuvers just to, to recoil. Uh, look at the, the upper body rotation, and he always gets that full redirection of the board happening through these maneuvers. And I mentioned before, he hasn't gone into the excellent range just yet. His highest oh, number in this did. event so far is a 7.93. I think he might be ramping up at the perfect time here. Saving oh. it for finals day, huh? <laughs> Again, I don't know how you really critique that. You just talk about how, how well he surfed that wave. Um, Yago had a, a glitch in the early part of his wave, and he was always going to have to like really push to try to catch back up. Yeah, so we'll see. Water. It almost looked like he was going to go for an air in this section right here. Like, well, what's he going to do? And he, he got a little confused himself and went, oh, I'll just do a floater. And now you can see he kind of gets some momentum going here and starts lighting it up. Boom. Gets that back foot real heavy. And the good thing about the, the Gooby footers, they get to come more vertical in the pocket like this. Bang. Right up, sticks it on the tail again. Right here gets a little bit of a carve back. And then uh, I don't remember what the end of this wave did, but oh, I loaded up for him again. Yeah. So this is, I mean, I mean, 
That's not far off of Ethan's score, you know. I, I think Ethan will get the slight edge there, but that's a great one-two combo for, for the first two waves of this heat. Yeah, I just think there's a little disruption of the flow somewhat. Yeah. You know, and Yago, I think he would feel the same way here. But uh, Ethan, on the other hand, was just flow master. He's carried his speed so well. Well, I told the judges to throw a nine, and the first one did, so we'll see where, <laughs> where the rest of them come in. <laughs> they don't usually listen to me, me Pete. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, you're, at this point in your life, you're probably trying to figure out, hey, what's uh, what's the scores, right? And sometimes yeah. you're like a little baffled by it. Well, let's yeah. drop that, and it is that big number, the 9.07, Ethan Ewing's best single ride of the event so far. And uh, I think he was really looking to just tap into something special in this semifinal heat, because it was a, a shocker. Uh, as far as the quality of the waves in his quarterfinal clash with Jordy mm. Smith. He never really got the opportunity to truly dig in, but he, he certainly did on that first ride. Well, the 7.33 and the 9.07, Kelly, I mean, do you, you're talking about how setting the scale and the comparisons between you. Do you feel like that spread's good? I think that was good. I do. I, I think uh, Yago started to kind of make some ground up as that ride went on, but it definitely wasn't in the same ballpark for me as Ethan's. I mean, that was, that was probably the best surfing I've seen this contest. Uh, maneuver for maneuver on the whole ride. Very pure. Love to get your thoughts on, on just the approach and just how well the backhand snaps have been scoring. This was an mm. event that was dominated by regular footers for a long time and frontside carves really kind of were powerful. Fast frontside carves were the recipe to success in, yeah. in, at this venue. But in recent times, obviously, backhand surfing has really improved. But, you know, as, as a frontsider, you Goofy really have footers have, have improved. They have. They had to. There was uh, there so many go. rights on the schedule. <laughs> but uh, it, it could be said uh, about the backhand snaps, too, at the left-handers that we've had on the tour this year. It, it, it's, you know, it's funny because a really good frontside carve, like some of the turns we saw Ethan do, uh, you know, there's a difficulty in, in executing that maneuver and, and getting a big score out of it. Yeah, you just forehand, you can't come as vertical into the pocket. You, you have, to, it's just the, the way your body works, it's the mechanics of your knees getting low to the water, all that thing, uh, all that kind of thing. And um, I actually feel, you know, some waves are a disadvantage for your forehand or your backhand, depending. And I feel like the Gold Coast is one place where it sort of has become more in favor to be a backhander at that wave because you can come more in the pocket, more vertical, throw the tail out, get a little more variety in the turn. And uh, forehand, you kind of get on this repetitive sort of lateral, horizontal kind of snap, cut back. And then it's hard to come deep off the bottom and, and, and hit the lip in the pocket and throw a lot of spray. Whereas on the backhand, you can kind of do both of those things and um, yeah I mean obviously you've had we've had uh, Gabriel have success here Owen Owen's been remarkable out here at times uh, a few years ago uh, when when Ethan was on tour before when he fell off uh, he had a heat out here against Owen and I knew how good I, I could see the potential of e Ethan and, and I was out either free surfing or surfing my heat before and I said you know you can beat this guy right because you could see he had no confidence. I surfed against him in Fiji in June. We come here a month later, and, and I said, you know you can beat this guy out here, right? And he's like, oh, and he kind of looked like a little bit of a deer in headlights. Well, yeah, but, Kelly Slater telling him that, too. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, because you could see yeah. it in his surfing, and it's like now he's reaching that potential. It's like maybe he didn't have that belief in himself. Maybe he didn't have that competitive drive or want it the same way he does now. And you could see, like, you don't go out in moments like this and put that performance on that kind of surfing on if you don't want it and he looks really focused and uh this i i, I expect y'all go to not ride this way very far because i don't think it's going to peel very far down the point well he's sticking with it at the moment hanging close to that pocket not a su super tall wall but he's going to uh, attack it the best he can and he's just been so on point with his timing throughout the contest so far and again he just gets that rhythm happening top to bottom the wave did sort of split in half there for a moment wow. but it's going to go again and he has got oh, those big oh, airs he can call on he's loading up for something special to finish this one off oh, and just loses it well just when he brings it up there he just lost a bit of control he surfed the wave so well and he, he made me kind of eat my words but <laughs> But I think he knew because the, the judges are really particular about the size of wave out here. And, and I think at most events, but that was a pretty small wave. And if he threw something giant and spectacular at the end, he could get that excellent score. But otherwise, they, they pull back a little because you just don't have the speed and the power on the smaller waves. And this wave with that energy uh, in a true proper J Bay wall, you'll get the same height in the wave at the end of the ride as you do at the start. And when you mm -hmm. get that one that taper off, it's sort of like you're shaking up the champagne and then you just slowly let all the bubbles out instead yeah, of like yeah, knocking yeah. the top off it. 
but he's uh, heading out. It's going to be a good number. It's certainly going to be enough to get him into the lead at this stage. And Kelly, I, I guess if you make a decision to ride a, a wave down the point here, that, that's got to be the goal. You've got to flip the script and get that seesaw battle happening. Yeah. Well, look, you can see this wave's only a, just barely overhead as he, as he took off. And so I, I thought he might just go down the line because he saw something coming wide. But look at this, bang, one after another. He just teeing off on this thing. And he couldn't help himself. He goes, well, I got the flow going here. I'll just keep nailing it. And all those turns were spectacular. Just stabbed at it. Yeah. And then, well, that's and then he got over the double up. Advantage with the back end, right? As you're able to kind of just that last second go straight up vertical. And then there, that would have been a clean, big method error. But if he landed that, mm -hmm. I would, you know, you don't see that very often. But again, right here, right at that moment in the pocket, you're able to just push it in the heel edge and go straight up. Mm. Yago yeah, is a big super. guy uh, with a lot of power, uh, I think. People kind of obsess over the years, but there's been uh, a, a real evolution in his rail surfing in the last year and, uh, at, you know, different stages, uh, particularly through that short season last year. He had some real confidence building performances mm -hmm. where he started to do his best surfing with the jersey on something that every competitor on the championship tour strives to achieve. For sure. And I think the thing about him, he's, look, he's a, he's a thin, tall guy, but he gets his power from leverage. It's not from bulk leg mass, you know. He, he places the board in the right spot, and he pushes off, and he uses the leverage of the wave and the board uh, uh, together to, to create that. But Yago's incredible surfer. He's just so well-rounded, um, and he, he, he's going to outpoint his first wave. And I thought he was going to kick out of it. It, was, it didn't visually look like a very <laughs> How good How many points did you see in that wave? I saw a four. And but he's turned it into an well, I turned around and looked out to the ocean, and I watched how far down it looked like it was peeling. It looked like there was no wall, but that double up, because there's two swells in the water, or like a change of the swell with a shorter interval, and another, like, you know, two or three footer came and doubled up underneath it. So you, you, you take a two foot wave and a three or four foot wave, and you got about a four or five foot wave. <laughs> and Pete, that might have been the perfect uh, illustration of the benefit of being on the back end, because I don't know if Ethan mm -hmm. would have been able to do as much work, high scoring work on, on that same wave. And I'm trying to visualize it. It's almost, I mean, you know, you can do a very tight arc like that, but you lose a lot of speed. Um, you know, you're not able to kind of connect it. it it's a, a disruption of the flow of the wave. If you're really going to kind of punch it vertically like that, um, it's much more easy when you're a toe edge, kind of hook it and keep that speed going down the line. Uh, and, and, you know, that's why the backhand it has that a bit of advantage. Yeah, when you're on the forehand, you're on your heels, it's more of a push-pull kind of thing, you know, leveraging with both feet, but you don't get the drive out of it. And whereas in the backhand with your toes, you can drive back down the face and set into the bottom turn. Whereas the forehand, you got to keep your shoulders going down the line and, and push the tail out a little, so it, it just mechanically works a bit differently. Ethan Ewing really consolidating his, his top at the top end of the WSL Final Five at the moment with this big semi-final appearance, but he's not done just yet. He's still looking for that breakthrough victory. But right now, we've got some waves uh, approaching the lineup, and Yago Dora's sizing this one up, and he's going to make a move for it. So this is wave number three, but he is way too deep. He's going to punch through the back of this one, and we'll see if Ethan on the outside sees any potential here. He's getting himself into position nice and deep. He'll be able to get that big turn on the outside done. Plenty of speed. Drives up into it. Hooks through that first turn. Nice cut down. Sets up the more vertical approach. And uh, almost there came into contact with uh, Yago, who's paddling out. But uh, Ethan's sticking with this one. It's got a lot of foam on the face. A little tricky to really set that rail and dig into high impact turns, and he gets tangled up in the lip here. It's going to clean up on the inside, though, and run a bit, so we'll see what happens here. Maybe a barrel. A little taps into the tube, bit of cover. Didn't get particularly deep, but found the exit. But uh, yeah, that awkward, wave let awkward him moment down. there. Yago kind of yeah. let go of his board uh, almost in Ethan's face. So you don't odd, see huh? that too often. Yeah, it was odd, for sure. Everyone's messing with Ethan this contest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was a, a big test for Ethan, uh, you know, at, at that moment with that priority, you know, to, to at least match and even tr get the lead. Is Yago uh, you know. okay? He looks a little... I think he, he's working that shoulder, and we saw, you know, Felipe Toledo have a, a wipeout, Jose Faulkner earlier in the event, and it's on those bigger waves jumping out with your, your arm kind of in front to, to break that water, and I think it maybe ripped his arm upward. Uh, he's asking. Uh, he's think, all right. Yeah, Giggs is, is, 
you know, you tap your head. That's the international signal, you know, tap the top of your head. That Not in Brazil, it. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait yeah, finger one. Yago's waving them away, saying he's OK. A uh, bit of a burner there on the shoulder. But 19 minutes to go, waiting on scores to come through for Ethan. And of course, he did win that opening exchange and uh, put a bit more than a, a point between himself and Yago. Yago's since put an 8.17 up. So he only needs a 6.43 out of that ride to get himself into the lead. Mm. But it was quite disjointed, just the, the flow on that ride. The middle of that wave let him down. You'll see he kind of gets a start. I think he saw what was down the line. He was going to be able to race to it. Gets that first kind of speed carve. And then I think something was going on with Yago. I don't think he was intentionally doing that. I think something, maybe his hand or his shoulder or something. So he let go of his board. But you can see how this wave just kind of frothed out. And uh, you can almost feel Ethan going, yeah, why did you do this to me? There's and, that type uh, of turn I was talking about with the vertical part of it. It just it doesn't have the same kind of drive out of the maneuver. Yeah, and he got a little stuck there. And then he gets the barrel. This is going to be, I, I, I think it's going to be close. Uh, yeah, I could see him going either way on this on this wave because, like you said, it was really disjointed in the middle. Yes, yeah, I don't know what happened. Some, something happened with uh, Yago physically, I think. I don't yeah, think it was like he, was he couldn't gonna... actually execute the duck dive. Yeah. So uh, let that board go. Maybe it just a, a twinge of pain. Yeah, I mean, it looked odd, but it, I don't think it affected Ethan at all. No. No, that wave uh, for Ethan wasn't that great. You could see him just oh, there we trying go. to work things out. Mm, yeah, you could see it. With the, he let the board off the right side, so he didn't. He wasn't holding on to the left. So Numbers coming through for Ethan, looking quite promising. Is it? Yeah. Had that speed track at the start of the ride. Mm -hmm. and, and even though that wave did get foamy, he was still able to, to attack the pocket. Definitely not the most connected wave we've seen him put together. And, uh, you know, for that reason, it's held back a little bit on the scale. But I, I think they like the tube rider at the end of this one. And it looks like it's going to be enough to see him into that number one position with just on 17 and a half minutes to go. He would love to hear the score, you know, I mean, because uh, taking the lead right here, it's a bit of, you know, obviously momentum, but uh, you have the lead now and you have a, a score that you can really build on. Well, Yago Dora uh, really collecting some, some great highlights on his road through to the, uh, the semifinals and uh, has had a, a bigger individual number than Ethan Ewing in, in each round so far. 8.67 in the opening round, 9.5 in the round of 16 and 8.5 in the quarterfinals. So he's capable of, of, turning, of turning this heat quite easily with the surfing and form that he's showing at the moment. But he Ethan does. Ewing, I, I wanted to talk about his surfing yeah. a, a little bit. Kelly, because, you know, you, you mentioned before in, in his first season uh, as a rookie, he, he just looked completely overwhelmed, uh, even though he had all that talent. He didn't have a, have a whole lot of confidence, but uh, he put out an edit last year. He, he hung out in Mexico uh, for a while after the event, and everyone was just sort of blown away by just the variety he has on the forehand and kind of had me thinking that if anyone can turn the the current criteria, judging criteria in their favour and maybe sort of have the, the judges focus again on, on rail surfing. It might be this guy, particularly on the rights. I don't disagree at all. He's yeah. spectacular. He doesn't uh, really need the airs, does he? No, he doesn't. But uh, that was the, I was just going to say, though, the one thing Yago has, those big airs and, and even in big, uh, even in right points in El Salvador, he threw that giant air in one of the seats early on and yeah. got the jump uh, on Ethan uh, as well over in Rio in a close one too. Mm. So uh, these but, guys uh, have got some point, history. Look at this. Look at the variety here. He's done three different turns here. Um, it's so well placed and timed. This one almost like a, a fourth variety of turn there because he was almost going to go into layback snap and then opens his shoulders and drives it back. Stays high in the face as he's dropping in so he's got speed off the bottom again. It's just technically perfect. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. The winner of this heat is going to be taking on Jack Robinson in the final here at the Corona Open J Bay. And Jack is with Rosie. Jack, unbelievable stuff from you. I mean, we just saw so much in that heat, uh, so much physical exertion. Talk us through the board change running over the rocks because that was so impressive. Yeah, um, I definitely had to fight for that one. Um, I uh, felt like, yeah, just the ocean and everything, I was pushing pretty hard. and. Uh, yeah, just have a reset in the heat too. Um, yeah, I just pretty much bulldoze the rock on that board. It is just, just get me a new one and get back out there and uh, and stay focused for the heat. Because I mean, there was there was 
Yeah, it was a fair bit of time left, but when there's so many waves like today, it kind of goes away really quick because there's just so many big sets and you lose a lot of time. So, um, yeah, just stay focused to get two more and get the job done. Yeah, you enter the final at Jeffreys Bay. In your career, how does this sit for you as an accomplishment? Yeah, it's incredible. Um, I've watched this event forever. Uh, Kelly, Andy, Mick, Park, uh, Parker, everyone, you know. So, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of good... Uh, highlights in my mind from it and now to be in the final yeah I'm, I'm excited hopefully a good final well talking about the final Yago Dora Ethan Ewing in the water who would you like to match up with um, I mean either be nice me and Yago we've been staying together and uh, we travel together all year so hopefully he goes but um, you know also Ethan's incredible and um, you know I think it's pretty evenly matched here everyone you know the guys are guys are shredding so uh, either or it's a new generation I'm excited Jack Robinson into the finals well done Jack thanks Rosie yeah he's got that smile on his face he knows he's on his way to a, a spectacular finish on the championship tour this year he's gonna get a, a shot at a world title too in September he's clinched but can you conceivably take a lead if you were to say win this event and then also win Tahiti I mean well, the door is wide open with that last event sure to is. get another victory um, but yeah, it is going to be uh, it is interesting. A question mark. This is, I don't know, but yeah, I, I think um, obviously, uh, I think if he if he can get the job done here, he's going to have a, a fantastic shot because Felipe is going to be hanging on to obviously a, around a 16 loss here, uh, yeah, right? So I mean, there's obviously closing the gap by just making the final, but um, you know, ultimately, it's also probably depends on how Felipe does in Tahiti because the rest of the points count. We're no throwaways. All right, we'll just over 12 minutes to go. Have a look at the set ways rolling our way at the moment. Numbers coming through too. Ethan Ewing's got a, a third score on the way. Pete and I were kind of scratching our heads there. Uh, Yago's last wave was really strange. He he was way behind it. There was a closeout section, and he hit it like a half a second too late. Did you notice that? Oh yeah. I mean, no, Pete I was, and I looked at each other like, <laughs> what, was what that? just happened? It was it was really really an odd thing because he would have been better to kick out because he wasn't going to make it around the white water and he wasn't getting the score. And it, it was I don't know. It was really an odd. Odd choice. I don't know if we could pull that wave back up, but uh, it just just seemed like a strange thing to do in a heat. So I don't know if he was in two minds about how to how to no, do it. Seems like he has been, you know, in this one for sure. I yeah. mean, the very first maneuver on on his seven three three was like kind of a, like an indecisive move. Mm. Uh, he definitely turned it around, obviously, yeah. but uh, he felt like he's a little confused on just, you know maneuver selection. Well, he did have the the big backhand rotation uh, in his last heat, and uh, he came in saying, "I almost." reconnected with that hillside rail and got myself back onto the open face. So he might see that as the, the key to turn in that big number that he needs. But also this is the first wave that we've seen him ride after, you know, hurting himself. So not sure if he's maybe feeling that as he travels across that face as well. Yeah, possibly. Just be, uh, have you distracted in your mind from, you know, you think about something else maybe, but that, I don't think that was the wave he, he was needing anyway. So the scores coming through for Ethan Ewing, 7.97. And the requirement grows. And Yago Dora now after an 8.88. Stay with us here at the Corona Open J Bay. Ethan Ewing out in front. Kelly Slater's in the booth with us. Plenty more action coming your way. Now on worldsurfleague.com, check it out. After today's finals action, as we see Yago Dora loading up down the line, chasing a big number after an 8.88 to get ahead of Ethan Ewing here. And flowing nicely, plenty of speed, loading up. Needs a huge finish on this ride, and that's a good start. Big hit in the pocket, and here comes the double up. He's going to climb over the top of this and get a whole lot of momentum as he hammers towards the end of this ride. And watch this one. Bingo. Whoa. Wow, really pushed the board out towards the beach. And there's the celebration, really feeling it as he comes flying down the line. And he's going to kick out of this one. But uh, that might help his chances. High risk maneuver made something of nothing really down the line. And we really haven't seen anything like that yet for the judges mm. to really chew on. So uh, it'll be interesting where he go. He did uh, not rotate out of that as clean as you would like. You know, ultimately, and the judges have been very clear sometimes on those types of errors. You know, a little the checks here and there, uh, you know, uh, layback or anything like that factors into the score. But I mean, he did save that way for sure. He did. And m my feeling is that my, my just my feeling watching is he didn't get the score but 
that maneuver was it was pretty sick to throw at the end of a wave. You've ridden for 45 seconds and your legs are tired, <laughs> burning. But I, you, what I do really like about that wave also is that he he took the downtime to wait for the section instead of just trying to make something happen in an in between. Because there's you have so much time to pace it out here and, and you you can't do more than what the wave offers to you anywhere. But there was a after his first like. I don't know, three or four turns. Then he had that, he just kind of waited, 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 and then set it back up again, bang, bang, before that double up. And then he timed that. You can see him telegraphing that air. And um, it's a hard one because you got to have speed, but then also sort of brush it off to get the rotation a little bit. And he did it. Uh, he does it as good as anybody, doesn't he? His yeah, Sean, like Sean, shock absorbers. Sean Thompson talks about that connectivity, but when you can't find it on a wave, there is a way to surf it without it looking unpleasing to the eye. And Yago, yeah. as you said, he was patient with the wave. He was, and so a pretty good start there. Watch this one, almost lose the foot there. Just pushes that power on the back foot and then gets the big float, I think, coming up here too. Bang, nice little free fall out of that. So technically a lot went on this wave. And there, here's that downtime I was talking about. He just waited for it, perfectly times that little clean section and gets the cut back into this little thing. And I'll let Pete talk you through the airs here. <laughs> I used to see Pete do flips at lower lefts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, easy. Uh, you know, he had that, that crew, but I mean, uh, the laid out backside threes that they can do now where he gets himself extended. You know, again, not the cleanest in the in the finish of it, but ultimately it, it was still amazing. Yeah, it's really, I mean, uh, the, what the judges see uh, from their angle, you can see it looks quite steep. Front on, it looked a little different. That tail is high. Wow, it looks Jeez. amazing from that angle. So inverted. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I think it, this is a, you know, quite possibly going to get him there. It might. Now, watching it back again, I'm, I, technically, technically, that's way up in the excellent. Um, as far as how he pieced it all together, but he had a lot of variety. He did have the big, long floater that he free fell out of. He had the, his back foot kind of came off. We pushed the power on that one. Um, He's yeah, it. It, it, he might get it. I don't know. I, I mean, they're taking the judges have not thrown anything out there yet. No. So it's a it's a one. It's a unique wave, right? I mean, in your mind, like it could go, you know, I always say when the judges take a long time to give the score. That's, a, that's really a most, more often than not. More often than not, I would say. Yeah, I, I think that's the, you know, the most exciting finish, obviously, in this semifinal clash so far. Mm. And that's really working in his favor on, on the outside. Ethan's had some great work. Thinking back to Ethan 7.23, though, it wasn't really anything on what Yago just served Different up. Different brand of surfing, really. And, no. and so that, that's a good one to compare to. But obviously, sure. uh, it's the big numbers they're going to be looking at at the moment. And they're all, um, clearly a, looking at video replays right now. Being out there in those heats, in those positions, and especially with time counting down like you have right now, I had a situation just like this against Samuel Pupo at G-Land. There weren't many waves, though, um, so we didn't have the luxury of that. Let's we'll wait for this. Uh, see if they go in one of these waves first before we talk through. Oh, it. this but, is a, a well but stacked they upset. They, they didn't call the scores out on our. He had two rides and I had one. They didn't call him out for about four minutes, and I was expecting he. I thought he was going to pass me, and I used my priority in that interim, and then he got the better wave at the end because I. I there you were so the few waves without knowing the information. There were so few waves that I. I thought I was. I might not get another chance. I got to take this one with about three minutes left, and then with 30 seconds left, he got away for 15 seconds left. So but you, uh, you want that uh, review. You want them to obviously think about the scores carefully, yeah. but you want them to do it quickly. And the scores are looking pretty good oh. from the outset here. I it's think Yago's going to get right the number there. he needs. Here it comes, 8.7. Oh, it actually oh, fell under. just short. The Why? first judge dropped a nine. He needed an 8.88 to get a nine into the two. lead. He got a nine. And uh, my first thought was right. He Your just, initial just thought was right. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. The judges watch that, that ride. Their initial interpretation of, of the ride is in real time. And uh, I think when they went back and, and looked at it, you know, they, got they watched chance it in here. real time. He's got another chance here. And this, is a really, this could be a really Ooh, good, wave. A good looking if, wave. But there's white water all in the face. If you look at the wave before it, there's white water everywhere. So it's decision time for him right here to, to think about, because he's probably not going to get back out and get another wave. Oh, he's done nice well so there. far. And uh, he'd be begging for this double up. Too. You see the low road, the kind of double up that happens on the inside car park section? And um, we'll see if it gets some clean face. Pete talks us through that. Oh, this is where it gets finally clean. And ooh, a little hesitation. And again, in between two minds in regards to what maneuver he wanted to do there. But the finish, 
Again, you're looking at an 835 needed. I mean, the whitewater was all over that wave and so hard to ride. And somehow he's going to pull it together, though, and he's going to beg the question one more time. Oh, unbelievable finish, wow. man. This guy okay. is giving it everything. And, uh, you know, he got so close on that last ride. Just uh, 0.18 short. And he now can, he uh, can, he's going to ask yeah. the question of the judges again. Yeah, please. Right? It's a, Come it's on. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. I, I don't know. That was a hard way. It, it was such a, a tricky section. He did so well to survive it. But uh, I think in, in, you know, if you're looking for a high quality turn, it was more a miraculous recovery than it yeah, was a, it an was amazing maneuver. Like, like we've always said, Jamie O'Brien's a guy who can pull stuff off. He's kind of like Gumby. He just lands back on his board. And and uh, Yago's kind of got that. He's got that trait too, where he just, he's got those long legs and he's they're like shock absorbers, like hydraulic pumps when he lands off of a difficult maneuver, like those big airs, like that, that air reverse they showed from Rottnest last year. Um, but that too, coming down and that, all that foam and lip landing everywhere and bouncing into him, and technically it was amazing, but the wave wasn't a great wave. And this is what happens a lot of times. Let's watch this wave again. See how much foam there is. It's hard to keep your fins just really clean, keep the speed super, super fast. See, those are kind of both almost sort of setup turns. Here's where the money turn starts to happen. Perfect timing, just bangs that. It was basically like a chop in the face that he timed perfectly. Again, that's another setup turn, kind of waiting it out here, waiting for that clean, clean water on the inside. And you can see the foam starts to lighten up here. And this is where some of the work starts to get done. Pete th thought he was in two minds there. I think that was pretty good myself. <laughs> um, I just felt confused for then, a second. And then he, that was a tough climb right there. And then this thing right here, uh, I don't know how he made that. I mean, the, the wave just threw his board back out the top of the lip. Um, I, uh, I don't know if you're going to give it like an artistic and a technical. One might make it, one might not. I don't know it, uh, for, the, for the score he needs. But um, it's come through. It's a 7.27. Yeah. yeah. And Yago's trying to listen in and get the get the call from the judges, but time's uh, running out. Yeah. 25 seconds to go. He puts his hands together and touches well, sarcasm there. When, but you, when you're talking about nine point rides, you're talking about Ethan's first wave. Clearly the best wave in that, uh, it, uh, best wave start to finish in that heat, in my opinion. So clean, so much variety, so much power. What an event though for Yago Dora. I mean, excellent numbers in every single round and getting two here in the semifinals. But Ethan Ewing really set the pace, Pete, on that first wave. It was, as Kelly said, from start to finish, a perfect ride, completely connected. Yep, and, uh, you know, and the best ride of the heat. I mean, what a heat, though. I mean, uh, that was fun to call right all the way to the end. Yeah. Right on, Kelly. Good to, to have you in the booth. Yeah, good to talk to you guys. Thanks. All right, mate. Uh, looking forward.